Hello, in this video I am going to be covering a uh, special sort of tool um, that can be very useful for circuit analysis, specifically with resistor networks, and it's called the Y delta transform. So it can either be spelled like Y as in W Y E delta, or you can use the symbols Y, like the letter Y, capital, and delta as in the Greek letter delta. Um, and the reason it's called this is because of the shape of the um, resistors that it forms. So um, what a Y delta transform does is it allows you to move between a Y configuration and an equivalent delta configuration. And this can go back and forth um, in both directions. But what I mean is um, you can have three nodes here. So let's just say you have node uh, so we have three nodes, A, B, and C, and then we'll have two sets of them. So this is A, B, and C. Now, you can have resistors um, connecting them in a Y configuration, which looks like this. So there'll be three resistors, and they'll be connected at a central node like that. So this is a Y configuration of resistors. And then there's also a delta configuration where they connect the sides of a triangle. So the delta configuration forms the sides of a triangle instead of being uh, connected at the center. And now we can name these resistors. So these are two different sets of three resistors. Um, so like for this, we can name this R1 r2 r3 and then for these three we can name this ra uh, rb and rc and what the y delta transform states is that these two are equivalent and so you can either move from um you can either move from y to delta or delta to y so y to delta or delta to y as in, if you have a configuration of three resistors like this, there exists another equivalent configuration of three resistors in the other um, formation that is completely equivalent. And what does that mean? Um, what do I mean by completely equivalent? I mean that the resistance across the nodes um, are going to be the same. So like if we take, if we measure the resistance from A to B, they're going to be the same for both of these configurations. And the resistance from A to C is also the same. And the resistance from B to C is also the same. And so these two resistor configurations are completely equivalent. Um, and then given one of these configurations, you can calculate the values <coughs> for the other configuration of resistors. Um, and so we can come up with formulas to do that. Now, since these are symmetric, meaning like these names are given arbitrarily, we only need to solve for one of these resistors to know the formula for all three. Um, and we'll see what I mean by that later. But first, like I said before, these are completely resi um, these are completely equivalent, which means that, uh, for example, the resistance I'll change to white again. The resistance from A to B for this uh, y configuration is going to be equal to the resistance from A to B uh, in the delta configuration. And then the same thing goes for B to C and A to C. Uh, now, knowing this, we can calculate, uh, we can set these resistances equal and calculate um, and come up with equations. So the resistance from A to B on the Y configuration you can see that you can just ignore this third resistor here, R3, because it doesn't um, it doesn't matter in this circuit path. Uh, we know that the resistance here is just going to be R1 plus R2. And the resistance on A to B in the delta configuration, you see that this is a um, RC is in parallel with RA and RB in series. So RA and RB are in series, and then that's in parallel with RC. So that will have a resistance 
equivalent resistance of the inverse, since these are parallel, um, 1 over RC plus 1 over RA plus RB. And now we can write these for any two sets of nodes. So for this, this is for the set of nodes uh, A, B. Okay, and then now we can do B, C. So B, C will have, if you look up here, R2 and R3. So instead of R1 and R2, you just replace it with R2 and R3. So R2 plus R3 is equal to, and using the same logic as before, we see that this is from B to C, this is RA here. That's going to be RA in parallel with RB plus RC in series. You see here, so from B to C. And then finally, we can find an equation for the resistance, uh, an equivalence relation for the resistance from A to C. And that is just R1 plus R3 because A to C here is R1 plus R3 is equal to 1 over RB plus 1 over um, RA plus RC. And again, we see here that this is because RB is in parallel with RA and RC in series from A to C. And like I said, these are symmetric because these equations all have the same exact form except the variables are just rearranged a little. Um, but these names are also given arbitrarily. Like I could have called R3, R1, and R1, R3. And the equations would end up the same. And so we only need to solve for R, like one of these on each side in order to get the equation for any of them. Because again, we can assign the names arbitrarily. Now, looking at this, we can solve first for R1, um, and that's um, that will give us the equation for a resistor on the Y configuration. And to solve for R1, we can do a trick where we add these two. So we add these two equations, and then we subtract this one. And what that gives us is what that gives us here is, so R1, if we add, so we have R1 plus R2 minus R2 plus R3 plus R1 plus R3 is equal to, and on the right hand side here we have, um, well first of all, this is going to be a pain to add, so we can find a common denominator on these and simplify this fraction a bit. So if we multiply um, multiply this side by, uh, so for one of these, I'll work one of these. If you multiply this side by RA plus RB, and then you multiply this fraction by RC, over RC, then you get this is equal to 1 over RA plus RB plus RC over RC times RA plus RB, which is then equal to RC times RA plus RB over RA plus RB plus RC. And so from this, you see that this is much easier. So if we do this step, if we simplify these fractions for all of these, you'll end up with using the same steps. I'm not going to write it out, but the same like the same reasoning applies. Um, and you get that this is equal to RA times RB plus RC over RA plus RB plus RC. And we get that for this bottom one. RB times RA plus RC is equal to RA plus RB plus RC. One thing to notice is that all three of these have the same denominator. So they have a common denominator, 
which makes them really easy to add. And now, if we expand these out, we can also see that this is equal to just RA RC plus RB RC. This is equal to, these are the numerators, RA RB plus RA RC. And then this final one here is equal to RA RB plus R B R C. So now if we add these together, if we add the top one and the bottom one and subtract the middle, we get that um, this right hand side here is going to be equal to R A R C plus R B. All right, that's smaller. Plus R B R C. Um, so that plus, or we need to subtract the second one, R A R B plus R A R C, and then plus third one, R A R B plus R B R C, all over the common denominator of R A plus R B plus R C. Now we can cancel a lot of terms out here. So we see that we have an R2, positive R2 and a negative R2, and those cancel. We have a positive R3 and a negative R3 because this negative gets distributed in. So those cancel. Now for this, look, we have a negative RARB and we have a positive RARB here. So these cancel. And we have a negative because this is distributed RARC and a positive RARC. So these cancel. So now what we're left with is here, it's just 2R1 is equal to 2RBRC over RA plus RB plus RC. And then this in turn gets simplified into R1 is equal to RBRC over RA plus RB plus RC. And this gives us our first equation here. Um, and this is a delta to y transform. So given a delta configuration with the resistors RA, RB, RC, we can find the value that R1 is by plugging the delta configuration resistors into this equation and solving. And this gives us the value of R1. And so using this, we see that if R1 is the numerator for this is just going to be, notice that the numerator is um, RB times RC. So these are the adjacent resistors. So the adjacent resistors, um, the product of the re adjacent resistors. And the denominator here is just the sum. So this is the adjacent resistor product and this is the sum. So we can generalize this to any resistor in the Y configuration. So for the Y configuration we have, so this is delta to Y. The equation for this is going to be, the resistor in the Y configuration is going to be equal to R, um, and then, so we can call this like R, um, so uh, R, R, like if we stick with the letters here, or uh, well, these are just the two adjacent resistors. So um, let's call this, we call this R prime and R double prime over the sum of R delta. So again, we have here, these are the product of adjacent resistors. And then this is the sum of resistors. And so again, we multiply to get R1 or this resistor, we multiply the adjacent resistors to the node in the delta configuration and divide it by the overall sum. All right. Now 
let's go to find the equation for a y to delta transform. So we're going from the y configuration to the delta configuration. Um, one thing you can notice is that if we look at the voltage, well, if we look at voltages here, uh, R1, R2, um, so if we look at the voltage at A, voltage at B, and voltage at C, we'll notice that this is simply a resistor voltage divider, where the voltage at C is going to be equal to the voltage across AB times the resistor divider formula. And then if we look at the voltage at C here, that is just going to be AB times the resistor divider formula, uh, voltage divider formula for um, RA and RB. Um, but um, what that means is, we can also solve this numerically. Um, what that means is that R2 over R1 is going to be equal to RA over RB. All right, so R2 over R1 is going to be equal to RA over RB. And then, so one way we can see this numerically is that we can just do R2 over R1. And now we have equations for R1 and R2. So we know that R1 is going to be RB RC over RA plus RB plus RC. And R2 is going to be the adjacent resistors here. So uh, R2 adjacent is RA and RC. So this is going to be RA RC over the sum. So RA plus RB plus RC. And then after we do a bit of canceling, we cancel the denominators and we see that RC is in the same. Um, top and bottom, we get that R1, R2 over R1 is equal to RA over RB. Oh, sorry, I don't know if that was what I said earlier, but yeah, so R2 over R1 is equal to RA over RB. And for any pair of resistors, we get that um, this, this ratio holds. So we get these two resistors are going to be the same ratio as these two resistors these two resistors are the same ratio as these two and so on and from this we can use the same exact reasoning um, to say that r3 over r1 is going to be equal to um, r c over or sorry r a over r c and there's multiple ways to think of this and there's multiple reasons to explain why this is true but as you can see here, it also comes purely algebraically. And now, knowing this, we can then plug in because we know we can solve for R A or R B and R C here. So we know that R B is going to be equal to uh, R A R one over R two. And we know that RC is going to be equal to RA R1 over R3. So now we can substitute these into any one of these equations up here. So again, let's start with the first one. R1 plus R2 is equal to, um, and we can substitute on this top equation here, I guess. So it's going to be equal to, uh, so first we know it's RC times RA plus RB over their sum. So RC times RA plus RB over the sum. So RA plus RB plus RC. So now if we substitute these in here, so if we substitute RB in and we substitute RC in, we get that this is equal to, uh, R A times R one over R three times uh, R A plus R A times R one over R two, and this is the numerator over R A plus R A R one over R two plus R A R one over R3. Now we can do a bit of canceling here. So we know that um, there's a factor of RA at the top here, 
that we can cancel with these. So this turns into one, and then this cancels out. Um, and now what we have is, uh, right this here, R1 plus R2 is going to be equal to uh, R1 over R3 times, or and then we can factor the RA out too, times RA. Uh, so times RA times one plus R1 over R2, all divided by uh, one plus R1 over R2 uh, plus R1 over R3. All right, and now we can solve for RA. Um, but before we do that, we can also <laughs> clean this up a little bit. So if we multiply this by R, um, R2, R3, to clean up the denominators here, R2, R3, because then these will clean up the denominators in the um, bottom of the fraction, we get that this is going to be equal to, so R1 plus R2 is equal to R1, R2, because the R3s here cancel, um, times Ra times 1 plus R1 over R2 divided by R2, R3 plus R1, R3 because the R2s cancel plus R1, R2 because the R3s cancel for that one. And then we can expand this out into equals Ra times, um, right, this is one big fraction, times, so what we're doing is multiplying R1, R2 through this, times R1, R2 plus, uh, plus R1 squared, so like this is R, so the R2s cancel and R1 squared, um, divided by R2, R3, plus R1, R3, plus R1, R2. So now, um, one final thing to notice is, I'm actually going to change the way I write this. So this is going to, this is the same as R1 times R1 plus R2. And now if you notice, this finally can cancel because this has R1, R2. And this is R1, R2, so this goes to a 1. Um, we cancel those out, and then we can rearrange to solve for RA. And finally, we get that RA is going to be equal to R1, R2. I'm rearranging the terms here a little bit. Plus R2, R3, plus R1, R3, all divided by R1. And so this is another, um, this is another equation, and this is the uh, y to delta transform. And what this is saying is, if we look, Ra here, Ra is going to be equal to, these are the prod, the sum of all the products of the pairs. So if we do r1 r2 plus r2 r3 plus r1 r3 we see that these are just the sum of the products of adjacent pairs um, so we know that the numerator here we have if we rewrite this again so y to delta transform we have r delta is going to be equal to um, so we'll call this RP and what RP is, we'll write it to the side. RP is going to be equal to R1, R2 plus R2, R3 plus R1, R3. And we're dividing this by, in this case, it's R1. You see, the R1 is just the resistor opposite to RA. 
So this is R opposite. So this is the equation for a resistor, um, a delta Y to delta transform. So the resistor in the delta side is going to be equal to this um, sum of the pro like the pairs, the product pairs divided by the opposite resistor. And so it, like if we're calculating RB, then RB is just going to be equal to R1, R2 plus R2, R3 plus R1, R3 divided by the opposite, which is R2. And with these two equations, um, we have both the delta Y and Y delta transform. So we're already delta Y and then we have the Y delta. So again, delta Y is R Y is going to be equal to uh, R prime, R double prime, where these are adjacent resistors divided by the sum of the delta resistors. And with these two formulas, we can effectively move between um, these two configurations of resistors. Now, I'll show examples of why this is useful. So a really prominent one is if we're trying to find, let's say, the equivalent resistance of a resistor network that looks like this. So if you have something like, like a, almost like a Wheatstone bridge configuration, where it looks like a diamond, but then there's a resistor in the middle here, like that. And then we're trying to find the equivalent resistance. Um, well, how do you solve it? Well, if you don't use a Y delta transform, it's really hard because, well, you can't have, there's no resistors that are directly in parallel. And there's no resistors that are purely in series here because, um, you see, there's basically, this is like almost like two deltas combined into one. So one way to easily solve this is if you do a Y delta transform. So like if you have node, uh, node A, B, and C, we can find an equivalent. Um, so that means that this is the delta formation here. So these resistors are the delta resistors. All right. What the Y delta transform allows us to do is it allows us to find an equivalent configuration of uh, a Y configuration of resistors that looks like this. And so we can replace this delta with a Y configuration. And so after we do a delta to Y transform, we can simplify this circuit, or I say simplify, make it easier to solve, because this turns into, well, I'll draw these in a different color, actually. This turns into a Y formation like this. And then the bottom resistors remain unchanged. So now we see that we've turned this really complex looking circuit um, with these triangles into just one resistor. So these are just two resistors in series. And then so we can combine these two resistors and then we will get we can get a, um, a really simple circuit where it just looks like, where it just looks like that. And then this is really straightforward to um, find the equivalent resistance for. So by doing a Y delta transform or a delta Y transform in this case, we greatly simplify the process for finding the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Um, and then there's some cases where a, a Y to delta transform uh, would be more useful. Like, let's just say we're trying to find the equivalent resistance um, of a circuit that looks like this. So, uh, I'll draw this a bit smaller. So, let's just say we're trying to find the equivalent resistance um, of these two points, and the circuit looks like this. So, like that. So like if we have a delta formation inside uh, with the Y formation inside of it, and then you're like, okay, so what is the equivalent resistance across points A and B? 
well this is really hard to solve again because like now you have a bunch of triangles whenever you have triangles with resistors you can usually simplify it with a y delta transform and in this case we can do a y to delta transform so we see here that this forms a y so these center resistors form a y and then we can transform this into a delta so by doing a y to delta transform here so y to delta we can change this circuit with a bunch of triangles in it which is hard to calculate into an equivalent circuit that looks like this so you have basically two resistors you basically have um, a delta formation inside a delta formation so it looks something like this and then while this will still look complicated it's actually much easier to solve because oh i should have drawn these in a different okay i'll draw this in a different color so this delta this green um y formation gets changed into this yellow delta formation here on the side that looks like this. And this simplifies the circuit a lot because now you just have three pairs of parallel resistors. And so then you can uh, combine those pairs of parallel resistors oh, this be, into a single pair. So like you can combine those resistors. So then you just get uh, this circuit here and then um, you get this circuit and this is much easier to solve so I just straightened this edge out but basically we've combined um, these three resistors or these pairs of resistors into three resistors and then that makes the equivalent resistance much easier to solve so this is a case where a y to delta transform is really useful and again a general rule of thumb for this is if you see triangles of resistors in your resistor network for a circuit doing a y delta transform can remove those triangles um, either a delta to Y or a Y to delta.